This week on Close Talkers, we watched Season 6, Episode 7, The Soup. So, Katie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad? Good. Did you like the soup? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Why are you surprised? I can be surprised about things. Did you like the soup? It was kind of fine. Hmm. I think it was pretty great. Really? Yes. Wow. I think I laughed out loud more during this episode than at least the last 20. I don't think that is true. There were consistent You're just in laughs, a good mood. Maybe. <laughs> I did have a glass of wine. Sorry, two glasses of wine. So the soup was written by Fred Stoller. Who's that? Uh, this is his first episode that he's written for Seinfeld, but you would recognize him. He was in Dumb and Dumber. He was in Scary Movie 2. You would, if you saw him and you were like anxious, nervous guy, you'd recognize him. I think he was in a bunch of episodes of, uh, King of Queens. Oh yeah. Yeah. You do recognize him. Yeah, totally. It was directed by Andy Ackerman. It aired on November 10th, 1994. Vulture.com ranked it as the 125th best Seinfeld episode. Ooh, that's harsh. And Screen Crush had it at a middling 103rd. Ow. I disagree. What? I mean, I guess we'll talk about it. But what, did, what did you find that was so funny? I liked how much Jerry hates Banya. Mm. We've never seen him before, right? This is Banya's debut episode. Kenny Banya. Banya? Banya. 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 <laughs> Do you want to go to the banya, where you will be scrubbed with salts and beaten with cedar sticks? So the story is is parallels, right? Jerry's fed up with banya. Maybe do a plunge into the cold pool. <laughs> Shut up. Have a schwitz. Elaine is fed up with, I don't even remember that guy's name. Simon? Immediately. Mm. Um, it's funny. Hmm. I don't know. Okie dokie. So Kenny Banya <laughs> was played by Steve Heitner. Hitner. Uh, he was in Working, the Jeff Foxworthy show, and Eurotrip. He's got uh, serial killer eyes. Yeah. And like, like, like dead shark eyes. Another like character actor, like in a bunch yeah. of like one episode here. Gigantic know. teeth. You think they're real? Oh, maybe not. They're very wide. I don't know if you would choose that model. Do you think he was wearing a flipper? <laughs> we had Tracy Collis playing the role of Kelly. She was in Quantum Leap, The Equalizer, Another World, and Seinfeld. I recognized her. I remember that she was somebody else. She was Marlene. It was Marlene. She was the ex-girlfriend. Jerry, do you ever take a bath with the lights off? Right. Who else? Daniel Garrel played Simon. Mm -hmm. He was in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, Free the Nipple and Drop Dead Fred. What? Yeah. Who was he in Drop Dead Fred? I don't know. I don't write down rules. Oh, come on. You're going to turn on your whole computer. You know I'm going to ask who he was in Drop Dead Fred. Just because you're dressing up as Fred for Halloween. Oh. <laughs> Spoilers. I already bought a green jacket. Nigel. Well, that doesn't help. You're the one dressing up as Fred. <laughs> And then Lindy Wallen played Hildy. Lindy, Hildy. Uh, she was the producer of Nurse Jackie, That 70s Show, and Sybil. Wow. She didn't have very many acting roles. However, she did act in the movie Sour Grapes, written and directed by Larry David. Oh. Have you seen that? Sour Grapes? No. Hmm. Okay, well, let's throw it back to last week when I asked if you remember this episode. Does soup constitute a meal? Is it chunky? <laughs> so, how'd you do? I think you nailed it. I did? Didn't you ask if uh, I said a super meal and you said, <laughs> I did. did you use a fork to eat it? <laughs> Was it consomme? Did you crumble crackers into it? Was it in a cup or a bowl? These are all important questions. If you are at a restaurant and you order it, it is a meal. Like, bread isn't a meal because they'll just give that to you sometimes. But if all you order is an appetizer, that is a meal. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I, we'll, we'll talk about it, but mm-hmm. like, I, I agree with Jerry and I will say that initially I agree with Jerry mm-hmm. that I am taking you out to dinner. Yes. You can order whatever you want off the menu. Our transaction is complete. Yep. However, at dinner, he agrees. Sure. And then, and then, it's then like, reneges on it. You have to, you have to take him out for another dinner. Yeah, another meal. They, they're talking about whether soup is a meal. T- they're talking about whether soup is a meal, but he's trading the suit for a dinner. For dinner, yes. However, they're arguing whether it is a meal, and so. Jerry then tries to buy him lunch when he shows up at Monk's, mm-hmm. and he gets soup, soup and, and sandwich. sandwich. Yeah, tomato soup and tuna on toast. That is a meal. Mm-hmm. Therefore, Jerry will have bought him a meal. It doesn't have to be dinner anymore, because mm. they're arguing about whether soup is a meal. That's my take. You're right, though. Jerry shouldn't have agreed to another oh, no. outing. No. Absolutely not. No. What, what's the Netflix synopsis? Is? Jerry bickers with Banya. I can't say it. I'm going to say Banya. Over what constitutes a quote-unquote meal, Elaine's English visitor overstays his welcome. George has an awkward date with a waitress. Maybe we'll sweat in the sauna. 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 (laughs) Spend some time in the yurt. Are you making fun of me? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know who I'm making fun of. (laughs) Okay, so the stand-up starts with Jerry talking about your friends getting into relationships, and then it alters the dynamic. Dear, who do you think is on first? (laughs) I wrote down, if you have an argument with, I don't know if he he said it's an argument with your friend or your friend's girlfriend, but your friend goes, well, I'd like to help you out, but I'd like to keep seeing her naked. Mm. Yeah. I like when Elaine and Jerry call each other Lainey and Jerome. Mm. And they're teasing, will they, won't they, sort of relationship that they have. Well, Jerome. Mm -hmm. I usually write down when Jerry calls her Lainey, and then I never really bring it up, but he did this time. Mm. So at the cafe, and Jerry orders something, and uh, the waitress, Kelly, oh yeah, he he orders the, the club without the bacon. And George is being funny, and he's like, I'll have the bacon without the club. And Kelly's like, you don't want the bacon, I'll surprise you. Mm -hmm. Being very, like, friendly and flirty and, like, complimenting George. Brings him a cold chicken sandwich. You know that supposedly club sandwich stands for chicken lettuce under bacon? That is a lie. Supposedly. I thought it was called a club sandwich because they serve it at, like, country clubs. I thought it was called a club sandwich because you used to club people with. Because it's so big. So is a Big Mac a club sandwich? No. It's got a piece of bread in the middle. That That's not what makes it a club sandwich. The piece of bread in the middle? No. Because otherwise you're just having a chicken and bacon sandwich. It's got to have the bread in the middle to be it a club do- sandwich. It does, but it also has to have the chicken and the bacon. You can't just throw <laughs> a hamburger patty and shredded lettuce and some mayonnaise that's been left out in the sun for six hours. That's burger sauce? And then Jerry's like, oh, I should have got the omelet. And later on, the omelet, damn. He's really broken up about this. That's why I wrote down the omelet, damn. <laughs> I wrote it too. <laughs> and uh, Elaine has met a Englishman mm-hmm. and has bought him an open-ended ticket. With points. Yeah, it does an open-ended ticket. What does an open-ended ticket mean? The return date is not set, but it's paid for. Does that exist? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I've seen open tickets. I've never purchased one. I don't know how to purchase one. I feel like through a travel agent you could buy one. Huh. But I don't like... It's like a voucher for a flight? Basically. One flight, please. (laughs) Date TBD. Destination TBD. Elaine has a very sexy pin on her jacket. Did you notice? I didn't notice. What was it, like a pinup girl? It was like a stylized sort of art deco woman with maybe no head. I can't remember. but <laughs> Perfect woman. <laughs> and very hippie. Hmm. Yeah. And Jerry's got a very flippy mullet in this episode. This is like Jerry hair. 
Yeah. It's yeah. super long. You should get a funky little hair clip from Kelly the Waitress. How many hair clips do you have to sell to, what was it, Bloomingdale's to yeah. quit your waitress job? 5,000? I, I don't think 10, they're 000? sourcing artisanally made local crafty things. Well, this was written by a man. Yes. So. <laughs> True. Nowadays. By, w- by which I mean it has to be right. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays you can have your little small business, you yeah, know, sure. jewelry making, whatever. And it's probably not making it into Bloomingdale's. It was Bloomingdale's, right? Bloomingdale's or Barney's? I don't know. Barney's? Is it the same thing? I have no idea. I know they're not the same thing, but like are they the same level? Are they are they equals? Are like, they, is it Macy's Bloomingdale's Barney's? Like what what's the hierarchy of New York stores? How long have you known me? <laughs> I think I got my Ukrainian school graduation dress at Barney's. Hmm. In New York City? Yeah. We were there for a wedding in New Jersey, and so we were like went shopping with my mom and got my – well, it wasn't a prom dress. Everyone – all the w- girls had to wear white dresses. You can just call it New York. Um, th- that's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. And I think like First Communion, you were paired up with somebody. A boy? Yeah. Yeah. Who is he? I'll kill him. I don't remember. I don't remember. You might legally be married. <laughs> so, we, have to, we have to check our marriage license. I think license. there was a priest there. I'm sure it was, it was a Ukrainian paying- event. Of course there was a priest there. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. They could have said anything. Yeah. It's a giant cult mass wedding disguising as a, an OAC credit. And now you are married. Oh, man. Credit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Credit. <laughs> so I wrote this down and I need your help reacting to it. They leave the restaurant and then George is into the waitress. He wants to ask her out. Mm. And Jerry says she's not going to put him on the glass. Get in there and ask her out. What does that mean? Does she put them on the glass? Like. That was what I thought when you said it, but I don't think that – is that a saying? I don't know. Is it? I guess – I we don't know. I think that is like – I mean, George – this is a bad idea on George's part, right? Like, it's like dating somebody at work, dating somebody that like – in your friend group, like you're – It's almost you, worse because like she's being nice uh, – Jerry says, like, they do work for tips. Like, she's being nice hmm. to you because it's her job. I bet you think strippers like you too. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if I've talked about my time in Chicago on this podcast. I think I have. But I wrote down Chicago because Banya, Banya, giving Jerry the suit and then expecting mm. expecting a dinner and then like this is does doesn't this doesn't count as a dinner. This doesn't count as a dinner. Reminded me of when I went to Chicago on my way to Omaha, Nebraska. Um On my way, I drove, and I had a friend who lived outside of Chicago, and on my way there, we met up for dinner. I think I, yeah, I stayed at her house. I was just going to stay at, like, a motel along the interstate. I stayed at her house, and it was a very nice visit, and so she was like, on your way back, like, stay with me again. And I was like, yeah, sure, it was was fun. And then it got blown out of proportion. She's like, no, we're not going to stay at my house, we're going to, like... Get a hotel in downtown Chicago. We'll like spend the day. You've never been. I'll show you around. Blah blah blah. So she booked a hotel, and I was picking up like lunch, bowl- bowling, you know, like another meal. Yeah. And then she goes, "I hope you're not paying me back. This isn't paying me back for the hotel room, because like that's on my parents' credit card, and I need like like an e transfer to pay them back." Mm. And so I went to an. I went to an ATM think? and took out all the money I had in my account and gave it to her. Like, I thought, you at the hotel room. I'll get this. I'll get this. And mm. eventually you'll be like, stop. That's enough. Did you then ask for an e-transfer for the bowl? The- <laughs> no, because I'm nice. Mm. But, man, I should have just stayed in a crappy motel on the interstate. It was the worst. When you were in Chicago, did you try a Chicago-style hot dog? No. I had deep dish pizza. I did not like it. Mm. Deep dish pizza doesn't seem like a good thing. I've never had. There's a new um, 
deep dish pizza place over by the Costco business center. I'm going to hate it. I don't, I don't, it doesn't seem like good to me. No. It's too much bread, too much sauce. It's too much of everything. You need a slice that's like a sliver to make it the right amount of food mm. in your hands at one time. You can't eat it with your hands. It's a, it's a pie. Remember that deep dish quiche I made? Oh my God. <laughs> The it took you two days to bake it. Uh, no, no. You made a twelve-inch diameter, six-inch deep quiche. Not six inch. That's not six inch deep. It was. Uh, it's a springform pan. It was a man six inches. <laughs> well, no, we ate it on the second day because because you you it, tried it to bake it for be, dinner the first day and it did not cook through. It wasn't no, it didn't cook through. It just was I knew it wasn't going to be ready, so I had to make another dinner for that day. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, it's still in the oven and we put our kid to bed and it's still in the oven and then like I finally took it out and as I'm taking it out of the oven, I nearly dropped it. I saw my light flash before my eyes. You baked it for I think 2 hours and 45 minutes. At least. I was going to guess 6 hours. Cuz you yeah, I think there were 12 eggs in there. It's a lot of eggs. In this economy. Do you like airline food? You know, I never told anybody, but I kind of like it. I think airline food's improved over the last uh, 20 years. Oh, absolutely. It's not great, but I'm never like, ugh, gross. I was wondering if you ordered one of the special meals, Mm. would it be better? Because it's different? I remember my uncle told me that his game plan was to order one of the special meals, not because um, it's any better or whatever. It is different than like the normal meals, but you usually get it first and mm. they like bring it to you right away. So it's like hot and everything like that, right? And sometimes if you're like at the back of the plane or wherever at the end of the service, you don't get your choice. They're like, yeah. well, all we have is this. Here you go. So you order the like low sodium meal and then add salt to it. Exactly. It's like ordering McDonald's French fries without salt and then I salt to them because they make them fresh because they salt them right after they take them out of the fryer. Ooh. Pro. Insider fast move. food <laughs> tips here. Yeah. So George invites Kelly out for a walk or something. Day date. Yeah. Nice move. You don't have to shower. I mean, the way this date went for George, he didn't have to shower for a night date nope. either. No. It's just horse manure. When you break the word down, ma and nur. <laughs> ma nur, it's nice. Well, maybe she got up to the line, and she called notable. She got up to the line of scrimmage, didn't like the look of the defense. Yeah. I did like when she said you stepped right in it. I certainly did. <laughs> Have you ever called notable on a date? No. You've never been like, well, this has been great, but I got to go. Like, I uh, have to drive uh, someone to the airport. Like, have you ever just, like, been on a bad – have you ever been on a bad date? No. If you have to think about it, I'm guessing it's no. I never really, like, dated. Oh. You just appeared on this earth, met me, and here you are. I had girlfriends, mm. and we went out and did things. All of them great times? Well, it was with me, so <laughs> – I was thinking of the one time, I know I've told this story in the blackout, where I called the Audible and was like, mm. oh, th- this is going to be like momentous. I can't spend it with this doofus. doofus. Yeah. yeah. And I did make up an excuse. And I walked through a field. Walked up to the line of scrimmage and like looked at the defense. <laughs> yeah. Is there a waitress network where Hildy like, knows Kelly? They just, just all know each other. It's a diner. It's in <laughs> yeah. New York. Apparently, it's like a block away from each other. Has the same menu? We don't go to diners. We don't go. We don't go to places where you can just be like tuna on toast. Like you have to f- look at the menu. Yeah, I, is is like a is this diner like a New York thing or is it like a vestige of the past? Is it because Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld, who were in their forties in the nineties, were like nostalgic about restaurants that existed in the seventies in New York? I don't know. I think they still exist. In places like New York, maybe Toronto, not so much here, where like, 
you're like here a diner or a brunch place you need reservations mm. like or, or you're going to be waiting forever you can't just walk into there aren't so many that you could just walk in and be like yeah maybe and like the, to, the diner culture isn't here, right? You go to the Elgin Street Diner. You go to Wolf and Ada's. You can go to- I've never been to Wolf Zach's. and Ada's. You can go to- I've never been to Zach's. Well, these are blatant. Let's, let's go. Okay, and we'll wrap this up and head out the door. Elgin Street Diner is 24 hours, and they have the best poutine in the city. Yeah. Okay, Costco has the best poutine in the city. Costco. Hey, folks, don't sleep on Costco poutine. It's really good. It's chicken gravy. Crispy fries? Yeah. Very so, well very well done, Kirkland. Very well done. <laughs> so Mendy's is a real place. Oh, nice. It is a glatt kosher restaurant. You know, it doesn't surprise me that it's a real place because they showed um, mm-hmm. a street. Yeah. Escape. It looked fancier on Seinfeld than it did on Google Street View when I just looked it up. I was going to say, it definitely didn't look like they like superimposed like the name Mendy's no. over an existing thing. So do you want to know what glatt kosher is? Yeah, absolutely. It's like stricter kosher. Oh. And it has to do with animal lungs. And so like even if a, a type of meat is kosher, when they slaughter it, they look at its lungs and they're like, okay, the lungs are all right. Mm. So it can be eaten. It's very interesting. Um. But then I read that if a restaurant calls itself glatt or like a a bakery or something that makes other foods. Yeah, they look at the chef's lungs. <laughs> Technically, that's like overreaching the term because it only refers to meat. Right. So they're like, like you can't have glatt kosher, I don't know, fish. Hmm. Yeah. Now, I believe... Everything that is grown from the ground is kosher. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I didn't know that till I looked it up today. I learned that from, what was the um, Hulk Hogan reality TV show? Mm, you're asking the wrong person. Anyways, they threw a uh, barbecue, like a- Oh, you told me about this. Um, and he thought his friend was co- like kept kosher. No, there was they, they invited like the neighborhood, and they like lived in a like okay. a lot of Jewish people in the neighborhood, and so they like really like tried to make an effort, and they like bought kosher meat and everything, and then they're like having the barbecue, and they're like, oh, we we did all this stuff, and then the guy was like, oh, is is that grill kosher? And oh. Hulk Hogan's <laughs> yeah. like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, you got to get a priest to, or a rabbi to bless the. <laughs> you can't like, have no, other meat yeah. on it. No. Oh uh, yeah. So Mendy's is open nine a.m. to eight p.m. It's not really an evening place. Huh. Yeah. So could you get, I mean, you could get dinner, an early dinner. Yeah. But, you know, if you went to a movie, you couldn't get dinner thereafter. Here's a question for you. What? Would you ever go to a restaurant and order consomme? Oh, maybe. Why not? It's, not as it's, a whole meal. It's, the, it's, it's, it's beef juice. It's the least, like... I'm, in my head, I'm picturing a tomato consomme. I'm picturing like a beef consomme. I'm picturing like you're ordering bone broth. Yeah. It's very trendy. Not for not for a dinner. As not an appetizer. A, a little cup of consomme? A chilly autumn evening? It should be free like bread. <laughs> I think in the, like at a Ukrainian restaurant, you would get a cup of borscht for free. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. like. It'll be full of garlic. Just Mm -hmm. warm you right up. Sure. And you can leave. But would that be a meal? (laughs) Uh, When Banya is talking about working out, Mm. Jerry's eyes glazed over the way mine do when anyone talks about their workouts or their diets. Uh Uh-huh. I thought you might bring this up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He goes- Start with curls. (laughs) Two sets of 10. You you work out with weights? No. You should. Why? This perplexes me. <laughs> I can't think of anything more boring than talking than about. Out? No, the talking about working out. Like, what are you doing? Pyramids, supersets, back downs. I hate this. What kind of splits? Upper body, lower body. Push, I mean, pull? my my right splits are okay. Left needs work. Center, I've never had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fasted cardio, unfasted cardio. 
What's your macros? Are you eating clean? Oh, go to hell. (laughs) There's a lady in a suit and tie sitting behind George at Monk's. Like a big suit and an orange tie. The, uh... This is the last time we see George at Monk's. Not ever. ever, No, no. In this episode. Yeah. Because after things don't go well with, uh... Kelly. Kelly? He forces the gang to go to Reggie's. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we've seen Reggie's. Oh, there's no big salad. There's no egg white omelet. It says so right on the menu. They don't even have decaf. We have Sanka. Have you ever had Sanka? No. What is it? I don't know. I think it's like, uh... Is it like a tree root? I was going to say, I think it's it's from uh, a chicory root. You're just, you're just drinking bark? It's like dried and ground up and then uh, turned into a powder and then mixed with hot water? Ugh. Or do you strain it like coffee? Oh, you. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't it from um, Fast Time at Ridgemont High? The teacher's like, I switched to Sanka. I don't know. I think you could, I've seen it in the store. Should have some Sanka. Sanka? Jerry has a giant bologna log or something that he buys. Big meat tube. Meat tube that Kramer takes for Hildy because she's hungry. And that blood sugar drops. Cheese. Cheese is good. (laughs) Well, it'll have to do. I think the, yeah. Eh, Kramer in this episode was good. I liked his fresh food thing. That was funny. But the Hildy thing was weird. I think that was one of the only down notes for me. Mm. I don't know if I've ever seen them open the freezer because Jerry's freezer is just the top part of the left side. What's on the bottom? I don't know. A, a different freezer? But Kramer just opens the top. Interesting. Yeah. I've never in my life had a vertically split fridge. Oh, I have. It feels like not enough space on both sides. Maybe that's why I've never had one. Hmm. I don't really have anything else. Just the tag with George alone at Reggie's, putting ketchup and then A1 sauce and then malt vinegar and then something else on his food. Yeah, I don't really have anything either. What did you think of Simon? Oh, the worst. Mm. In my country, we don't say what. We say pardon. Yeah, I can't stand pretentious, uh, stuck-up, know-it-all, uh condescending jerkwads like that. What did Elaine find attractive about him? Ah, the accent? But she was in England. Everyone had the accent. She was just overwhelmed. Her 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 hormones got the best of her from all of the accents going on mm. and she just like latched on to the first Englishman she saw. Hmm. I went to Ireland uh with my friend and <laughs> we she She's single, and we were joking that she was gonna. We were gonna find her an Irish uh, lad, and nobody was good looking in that country. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you were out in the country. We were also in Dublin and Galway. Mm, okay. I don't know where all the hot Irish men must have left and and gone to pick up chicks in America mm. because there were none left for her. Who's the hottest Irish celebrity? I can't think of anybody. I really can't, like, I can't think of, the only name that I can think of is Liam Neeson. Um, oh. who's the guy that's in Oppenheimer? Isn't he Irish? I don't think so. I think he's British. What about the Boondock Saints? Aren't they Irish? One's American. Oh. <laughs> what about the Tri-Channel? Hmm, there you go. Uh, which one's hot? Patty? Jesus. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I have no corrections. Next week, it's the mom and pop store. Donald? Maybe Donald. I don't know. Colm? Who's Colm? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of Irish names. Who's who's Five Head? They all looked like Five Head. <laughs> What's his name? I, I'm, I'm going to guess it's not the hot one, <laughs> considering you're calling him Five Head. <laughs> Yeah, I, I said Killian Murphy. Yeah, he's Irish? The guy from Oppenheimer? Yeah, he's Irish. I mean, he's not my type. Fine, he's good looking. He's looking up hottest, hottest Irish celebrities. 
I wrote in hot Irish and then Google auto-completed whiskey. Mm. Colin Farrell, Killian Murphy, oh. Liam Neeson, Jonathan Rice Myers, Michael Fassbender. Mm. Discuss the super hunks. Chris O'Dowd. Mm. A fine looking man. Gabriel Byrne. Okay. Daniel Day Lewis. I'm picturing all of these people now when they're old. So. Eh. Brendan Gleason. <laughs> okay. Do you remember the mom and pop store? Cole, uh, Cole Meany. Get out of town. Is that O'Brien? Yeah. <laughs> Potato headed Irishman. Yes. Irish, of course. <laughs> What's the mom and pop store about? Jerry loses all of his shoes to a mom and pop store that uh, goes out of business and steals them. Huh. He's forced to wear cowboy boots. Well. See you next week. Bye. On Close Talkers. Don't do that. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?